back at the whiskey blendery and the irony is we walk right into this one so a couple things i wanted to touch base with tim just about business i know a lot of people want to get into the whiskey space and he's very good at business operationally executionally service i've seen it with my own two good eyes depending on what day it is and we walk right in he goes man that sugar the maple syrup you said walk him through what happened and how you're going to rehabilitate this yeah that, so there was a um there was maple fresh maple syrup that got barrel aged in here it got taken out and um and the barrel was really fresh like we had fresh dumped it then it got maple syrup and so yeah that that sugar dehydrated the wood while it was in there which is why we've been putting wet towels on the uh on the honey project but yet it's still leaking down there so but I thought that it I thought that it was good because the integrity of the barrel was still is still good. They said it was good when they dropped it off after their honey project and the, or their maple syrup project, and then we just filled it up with the assumption that it was good and <laughs> it's not good. So um, so yeah. How do you move forward in this position when you know for fact like again, maple syrup was aged in here, so you're like we want to put the whiskey in here to complement it, but now you go. Yeah. We can't lose whiskey. I mean, I could live yeah. without the syrup, but the whiskey, you can't throw that away. Yep. So we we put the whiskey in, so that's that's going to help it. We need we need the inside wood to be saturated. So just by putting the whiskey in, that helps saturate it. Uh, we put a little bit of dump whiskey on on the top of this, so that's gonna slowly soak into the wood and seal this up so so i mean you can even see that like it's yeah, it, it, it's starting to raise up and so that's not good um so hopefully we don't have to pull all the whiskey back out and then try this try it over again um but i i had them hammer the first three rings so it was leaking more on this end so we hammered these rings down to put more pressure on on the staves uh-huh um, make it a little tighter and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll roll it around. So hopefully it, it kind of seals itself knowing that this is the bad part. And then we'll just leave this up because we've only got about 50% yield. So about 130 bottles, 125 bottles, I'm, I'm going to guess is the total yield on this. So it's going to be right, right around half. <laughs> so, and, the, and it's got a, it's got a side bung. So We'll, we'll be fine. We don't need to, if this, it's good if only this top part is leaking. Yeah. Cause then we don't have to touch it. And then we, so we won't get all the maple syrup out of it that we want because the whiskey's not going to be touching all of the wood that we want. Cause normally we'd put it on the rotisserie and roll and it. spin it and set it in different positions every day to, you know, get it out of the wood on all those. So, but when I tried the sample, it was very maple forward, so <laughs> might not need it all. And is this a holiday blend you guys are doing, or what's the what? What is this? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's with uh, this is the way. Okay. So the the group Dan McDonald and uh, Ryan, and so they did the did the the maple syrup. So I guess that went quick. I didn't even know they were releasing that. And that, <laughs> that was gone. Um, but the sample and Tony tried the the sample of maple, the maple whiskey sample we did, and it was. It was pretty. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was too too much maple because we put two and a half bottles in for five days, maybe. Which yeah. I knew that would be too much. Like one day would be enough. But really, I was just seeing if if that whiskey pairs well with this barrel um, and the maple, and it did really well. So, so walk them through if you don't mind, because we've talked about this, and it's more so off camera. A lot of people want to get into the whiskey space. How do you find success when doing this day in and day out? Because I'm sure there have been a few make it or break it moments, mentally probably more than anything, where you think, man, we've got to make it this month or we got to move forward. Yeah, I think at this stage in the game, you gotta <clears throat> you got to focus on transparency, service, yeah. and quality. If you're... If you don't have quality whiskey, then you need to compete at a price point, which it's hard to compete with the big guys on a price point because of their volume that they do. So, and, and their distribution that they already have. So yeah, you got to separate yourself with, with service and quality. And, and then you got to know something about the, the whiskey and buying barrels to get the quality. Otherwise it's a coin flip when the stuff comes in. So that's why, 
that's why we're starting to really hone in on, on specialty barrels and cherry picking certain barrels. So, and you might not even know this, but we went back, yeah. we went back to Kentucky and got some more Kentucky bourbon barrels. They're yeah. not here yet. Um, but that's, uh, probably two weeks away because, because the ones that we got are, they're so good. We knew they were good, but people are trying them and they're going nuts over them because they're, they're once in a lifetime whiskey. So literally, it's, yeah, really. And so, um, and nobody's had anything like, like the, uh, wild Kentucky strawberries that just got released. Yeah. Like another one that sold out in a minute, which I, I hate that people, cause we, we heard it probably 50 times in the last couple of days. Hey, I had it in my cart and then, then couldn't, uh, by the time I tried to check out, it was already gone. So, I mean, I, I hate that so many people are missing out on it, but we've got more barrels coming and, and hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll have more to go around on that before the, before the holidays are over. It, here, here's the thing though. In fact, it's never really going to be enough because you can't replicate. Well, what it depends. You like you, you, you go a year ago, and it was always enough. I mean, and we had <laughs> double jeopardy lasted a year versus a couple days. Like it's, so it's, it's, uh, it takes a while to build the brand and yeah. you, you hear people talking about, Oh, well, whiskey's whiskey's really about marketing. It's not about the whiskey. I would, I would argue that. I mean, if you're, if you're going to mass distribution and you try to get a celebrity and all that, yeah. Yeah. Then it's about marketing brand image yeah, but that turns into a black lifestyle hole. yeah everything yeah and it's and it's not focused on the quality of the whiskey At so all. so that was one of the reasons why we didn't take any offers or take any investors because we were solely focused on the quality of the whiskey to build the brand and now it's working out but it was really rough the first <laughs> couple of years because nobody knows we're here we're not in any liquor stores a couple people couple clubs yeah. uh, local whiskey clubs supported us and that got us through to even like pay the bills but i mean it was just this year where i started paying myself um so <laughs> those are the things that people don't talk enough about no though. and and, yeah. and I, it just even what you know on the other stuff what i do i grabbed one of my dog's paperwork and i was like damn this is six years ago you know 2019 objectively wow. and you go i saw what we would be doing but I knew it'd take two years just for her to grow up. Mm. So there's yeah. nothing I can do to rest the process. Yeah. And in business, three years is your hump. You either onto something or you gotta, you gotta change your focus, unless you really are onto something and it's just gonna take a little bit longer, but. Yeah, I remember last year there was a, there was a barbecue festival and uh, the guys at Iron Root, which mm. everybody loves, um, everybody loves those guys. So I was talking to them last year uh, and I was like, hey man, are, are sales like low for you too or whatever? He's like, hey, don't, it, it took us like four years, like give, <laughs> give it four years before before you try to reevaluate life. So if you can stick around for four years, <laughs> then, then you're probably over the hump. Mm. And so I, I feel like we're over the hump now. Oh, for sure, um, for so sure. About, about two and a half <laughs> years in, but I mean it, but we're, we're also keeping our overhead very low. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, it would be nice to have a huge facility and I mean, it takes me 45 minutes just to turn the forklift around because I've, <laughs> I'm surprised you don't see orange paint. Yeah, you yeah. kind of do because, because I mean, I've, I have one inch to spare. Literally. And, and, and I mean, we play Tetris every day, moving this around, move this over, move that over just to access one thing. And it's very inefficient. <laughs> So I would love and you're, to. You're all about efficiency. That's what's funny. Yeah, man. yeah. It's, <laughs> His it, whole life it, is wrapped up in it, <laughs> one plus one equals two. This yeah. is like, well, we're at three. I don't know how we got to yes. one. What are we doing with zero? Zero shouldn't be. In the <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we could we could scale, and I mean, we've been busting at the seams the last six months, easy. Um, but we want to scale the right way too, man. because that's something that I mean people people see once okay once once it's hot then it's like oh man we need to do this we need to do that it's like i want to be calculated with that because yeah. once i say yes and once now once i have that that note on the new building then there's no turning back and i have to pay that note yeah and it's like i want to get to a point to where i could pay the note now with this space before before we move to another space. So, and what's your best advice to those people who start seeing success right before they drown in? What I'm saying is, your point is the same thing I like to focus on is, hey. You, you always say, hey, go slow, I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> yeah. And that 
that plays true to most businesses. I mean, you can, then you're really rolling the dice to where it could pay off by, by, you know, hammer down gas is on the right. Don't stop. Keep going. Um, but you also have, I mean, I have my entire life savings in this. I have Literally. I, like, so I know it's going to work, but I'm also a little more conservative now because I have a family now. I have all this stuff to where, yeah, if it was just me, I'd be like, all right, let's roll the dice. I believe in myself. We're going to do it. I still do that, but now I'm a little more calculated and a little slower uh, just to make sure like, Hey, we've got some, we've got some safety. We've got some diversity built in. We've got this, we're starting to get other barrels. We're working with a new broker and, and he's been fantastic. So, um, we'll organically grow into it. I'm not in any rush. We don't have <laughs> investors to appease and hit these volume goals. Man. We're solely about the quality of the whiskey and people are starting to recognize the quality of the whiskey, which is why we're getting busy. Hey, and I could tell you from from you know my my point of view when we came in here, it was moving, but is it is running now, man? It yeah, is. It's and this is again. I saw. I was like, man, this is going to be special. And uh, you know, we we shot a video with Jimmy G the other day to apple pie, literally last night. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Did you bring me the pie? Uh, no, we're bringing oh, you a better one. Golly. <laughs> hey, you, he liked the first pie. Was, oh, the first pie was incredible. It was the best <laughs> apple pie I've ever had. <laughs> so, I mean, it speaks about it was good. He was like this. Jimmy said, oh, man, I got to take some of this. He was excited, and we and he had it. So the video dropped. I was editing it actually before I got here, but we had fun with that. My point in bringing up Jimmy is Jimmy and the most of the people you come in contact at the Whiskey Blendery, they are so supportive and excited about mm. your future. Yeah that they're trying to figure out anything they can do well, to contribute. Well, it's, it's our future. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah we're, we're moving forward together. The yeah. people that support us, like they're along for the ride. So, oh, uh, so it's not like, oh, yep, yeah, we reached this point and uh, yep, yeah, sorry, no, we can't talk to you anymore. It's like, <laughs> no, nah, like we wanna, we wanna keep this exclusive. We wanna keep, like that's kind of what makes it special. If we open it up to everybody and open it up to the mass markets and, and I was just telling one of the other guys, I had another, uh, liquor store reach out from out of state like hey what do i got to do to carry your stuff it's like you're not going to that's not that's not <laughs> what we're doing um so so the, as long as i can stay true to what i know works and and the atmosphere i want to create like because it's it's more than just like a drinking hole and it's more than just a, a spot to come and, and even try good whiskey it's like the the people i've met and the friends that i have now and the people that you know, even donate their time with the charities we work with. Like it's, it's, uh, it's something special. And as we grow this, that's going to become even more special. And yeah. you're, you're a big part of that too. Oh no, I'm, I'm here. I've told Tim that. And I think we, we definitely see the same vision. I, I love the excitement when I'm sitting back, I sit back and just listen a lot of times to everybody. And you start watching the excitement and you know, you're growing these friendships and relationships. You go, man, I can't wait till this thing continues to do what it does. If you move faster, like you said, you, you'll run yourself into a hole and a lot of businesses go out of business thinking that they're doing business, not focusing on what the business is. And this is a place where people care. When somebody yeah. says, hey, go open up that locker and try such and such, just a $600 bottle of scotch. You mm -hmm. go, pour as much as you want. You go, that's great. Jimmy's brought us tons yeah. of bottles yeah. to the house. He's like, yeah. if I bring it, it's yours. I don't care. I'm gonna get some more. Plus, I'll be back at that blendery. <laughs> well, even even on Saturday when uh, Jamarcus was here, yeah. like there were guys, yeah, like uh, old charter from the 1960s in a <laughs> in a bottle that looked like binoculars, like it was a, a mold of binoculars, and it had a case for the binoculars, and like <laughs> oh, just really man. cool stuff that they're like willing to share it, and and like old Willet and all kinds of stuff that people bring in. So it's kind of funny, and, and it's kind of funny people. Even uh, we opened up last night for some guys and and they brought a Russell's 15 because they wanted to compare the Russell's 15 to some of the other 15 year Kentucky bourbon that we have. And it was like, they're like, shit, I shouldn't open this. Like I should have just. <laughs> now I'm it. disappointed. I spent whatever I spent. And yeah. And it's not near as good as some of the stuff we got. So um, that's why we're getting more of it in because yeah. um We've, we've gone through it much faster than we anticipated. And there's people from Oklahoma and Mississippi and South Texas and all these places that are reaching out now 
that they're hearing about us because of the quality of the whiskey. And then they come in and have such a cool experience. Man. And then it's like, hey, I why, gotta tell why, you are we, why are we not doing more stuff with, with this blendery? Guy. Yeah. 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 And guys, I tell you this, you know, if you've ever considered, and I say this in a lot of videos, if you've ever considered potentially buying a barrel or walking down a barrel buy and purchase and definitely having a guide on that road, mm. it's probably one of the best people to do it. I've not been to a Jack Daniels release or a, a Willard or Russell's or anybody else, a tur you know, Wild Turkey. What I can tell you is you come in here, it's going to be one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one. -on -one, no rush. You want to get it right. He does for sure. Make sure you have a good experience and even more importantly, that you get great whiskey. Yeah, was, so we got uh, our new guy, Richard. So, <laughs> so I was telling him, hey, grab this sample, this sample of this barrel. We got a barrel pick uh, tonight and he's it's like, okay, and, and he asked, hey, well, how do you decide which ones go towards the barrel picks? I say, that's easy. We pick our best barrels. Our best barrels always go forward to the people that want to do a barrel pick. It's like, well, you, don't you want to keep some of those for yourself? No, no. We, we have the whiskey that's in its prime now, and people are wanting it. Let's give them our best barrels every time. And that has always worked out for us. We've never, like we've never to, tried to like hold it back. Like even the release, we're about to release the uh, Kentucky Candy Land in a couple weeks. Oh my God. And it's like, a guy asked me last night, hey, how did you, uh, so you, you held this one back. Like when you got all of them in, you held this one back. This was your favorite. I said, I love them all. I cherry picked them all. I let all the clubs that had reached out in the beginning, all of them have picked what they want. And I'm glad to take one of the last few that are left because it's still great whiskey. And it's amazing. Like, yeah, you'll have to try it. It's it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm happy to put our brand on it as one of our releases because it's that good. So I, I would tell you, consider this, people. You walk in, you see a Ferrari. It's a lot. Somebody tells you you can't buy the best Ferrari. Well, they're all Ferraris. In this case, I believe even if you're blending, you're going to leave here feeling like you got a Ferrari in a bottle. And that's the only thing that's sold here. The bet the Rolls Royce, the best of the best whiskey. Yeah, and even it, even the younger stuff and the not even well the the bake sale that was a seven year wheat whiskey that we proofed down. So like ninety five proof, you know, it's lighter in color because we added a significant amount of water. But then even the guys tried it um, before their barrel pick of the fifteen year Kentucky stuff, and and most of them bought a bottle of it because they're <laughs> like, man, this was so good. Yeah. It's so full of flavor and a very long finish. Uh, so f to, to it be at a 95 proof and to taste like this and this full bodied and robust and all these baking spices and all this stuff going on. And it's a wheat whiskey. It's like, <laughs> how is that even possible? Um, so it's like, man, and the price point at 65 bucks on that one. So it's like, it's a no-brainer, as they say. Yeah. You got to You got to leave. You, you can only buy it here in general. So you got to leave with it, guys. Um, Another good day. Already a great start at the Whiskey Bloomery Day. Love the fact that we walked right into. Other yeah. than this. Well, this it's is been basically, a great this day. is some business stuff. Like every now and then something's going to go wrong and you wouldn't be yeah, doing so business if it all worked. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's not awful down there. So let me, <clears throat> let me look. So hopefully when I tilt it back, is there, is there a ton of whiskey underneath there? No. no? Okay. All right. So that's, that's good. So I'll keep moving it and then, and then hopefully it'll, it'll be dry. If I move it a couple more times <laughs> and then we'll keep, we'll keep dumping a little, little whiskey on this and, and, uh, keep that hydrated, keep that hydrated, slowly add more in and make yeah. sure that it's, it's, uh, it's going to work out. But, um, <laughs> well, stay tuned because, uh, is this going to be available to everybody? Um, probably not. <laughs> no, it's, it, well, it's another, it's another club release. So yeah. if, if you're in, this is the way then club, you then, the right then, of then you'll get access to it. Um, normally I would say, yeah, we'd have some, but things have been going, going so fast lately that there's, there's more people that are wanting our stuff than, than, than we're, we're not bottling that fast. So supply demand, the demand is there. The supply is not people keep a whiskey. 